and I want to draw your attention to one of only two fighting games that Saikyo ever published, Battle K Road. Battle K Road came out in January 1994, about two years after 2D fighting games had been formulated and codified, a year after the first wave of Street Fighter 2 clones had cashed out, and just before the big 3D fighter boom. Saikyo actually specialized in shooting games at the time, and they were successful enough to try and branch out into other projects, but it's doubtful that they could have produced any game in response to a hot new trend any faster than they ultimately did. This is probably the best time they could have made their attempt, but the game is a lot rougher around the edges for it. Battle K Road's hook is that it's structured as an actual fighting game tournament. Instead of using the word tournament as a pretense for combat, the fights follow something resembling actual tournament rules. K Road is often described as realistic because it doesn't feature a lot of combos or hyper exaggerated moves, but let me tell you, there's nothing realistic about machine gun punches and sumo wrestlers flying through the air. Saikyo often had success with their shooting games by twisting standard mechanics around like adding exclusive dialogue for co-op play, or allowing playable craft to split and target different targets at will. And they took the same approach to this fighting game of theirs. The game has six attack buttons, three punches and three kicks, from light to heavy, and each of them has an extra attack that could be used by pressing forward and an attack on the ground. The only rolling joystick motion that's used in the game is quarter circle forward, for forward dashing. All of the special attacks, are performed by holding hard punch and hard kick, and only one of those, for a second, and then releasing it. And you'll perform a different attack if you are standing, crouching, or in the air. If this were all that set the game apart, I could get away with cutting this episode right here. Psycho should be praised for such an intuitive control scheme. Aspiring devs, take note. Blah 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 But the game chopped and screwed way more than that. One thing to note is that there are no mids. The miracle hit state that acts as the divide between the 80s and 90s eras of fighters is not present here, and most attacks must be blocked either high or low, although special moves that involve some sort of rising motion can be blocked at either height. Also, the roster is made up of 8 characters with 8 clones to double the headcount. That is a signature trait of a fighting game that's made on the side, with minimal resources. There's only a few I know of that pulled that stunt, and only one of them Plasma Sword was worth anything. I also mentioned before that the game is styled after a proper tournament, but that begins and ends with its down system. Like a realistic tournament, when fighters get knocked down, the ref calls for a break and the fighters make their way back to the ring. Unlike a realistic tournament, however, there are no points used in this game to pick the winner of a match, and no lingering damage from a blow that was strong enough to knock someone out. The target just loses vitality, like every other attack. All in all, Downs are momentum killers, and everyone else who has covered this game has been quicker than me to mention that. They can, however, be avoided or used tactically in some cases. See, downs seem to work off of a point system, where the character that gets hit racks up a secret tally of points, and when they hit a threshold, they fall down. Generally, specific hard attacks and special moves seem to carry the property, while everything else just causes stun. So there is a trade-off involved. If you want to keep your pressure up, you use lights, mediums, or the hard attacks that don't cause knockdowns, and if you want to break pressure, you fish for a knockdown to go back to neutral. It's hard to eyeball what the threshold is because different attacks from different characters seem to knock characters down at different rates, but from what I can tell, the points used to determine a down don't go away or fade or delay over time and they don't overlap with stun values either, so you've got two separate tallies, stun points and down points. Speaking of stun, there usually isn't enough hit stun to lead to lengthy combos, but the block stun in this game varies across attacks, and some characters have ridiculous amounts of pressure from certain block strings. It's understandable why the game is like this, since it was Saikyo's first attempt at a fighting game. Heck, maybe they wanted it this way. Maybe they overestimated how useful throws were up close because these are practically Sam Show 5 special throws we're talking about here. But it makes matchups vary wildly in difficulty and outcome during high level play, for lack of a better term, I suppose. I mean, if any of you viewers out there know about a bustling Battle K Road scene, let me know because I certainly didn't come across it when I was making this video. 
With all of this taken into consideration, it seems like Battle Key Road wasn't just contrarian for contrary's sake, and that it had some effort put into the battle design and the way the fights would flow, but it just wasn't polished or exciting enough to carve out a niche for itself. Even so, there's no need to feel too bad for Saikyo. I mean, yeah, they got bought out in 02 and all, but in 1994, their best years were ahead of them, and they go on to make that sweet, sweet erotic Mahjong cab money. So they're good. Heck, they're not even defunct. So they're fine.